Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're taking a look at Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Now, can it improve upon the disastrous first entry in the series, or is this another easy game you can just, you know, skip out on? Well, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family, and let's get started. So out the gate, is it better than the first entry? Yes, it is, thankfully. And it wouldn't take a lot, honestly. Feature like the first game and performance was awful. So yeah, there is the good news. Now, is it much of an improvement? kind of depends on what you're looking for. First, mechanics, it's a traditional kart racer, meaning you'll be controlling the acceleration, you have a drift mechanic, there's boost pads all over the shop, weapon pickups, and then the occasional obstacle. You can also then as well actually do stunts off of jumps, which give you a boost bonus as you land. These are represented by the slime green jump markers, and of course that makes sense, it is Nickelodeon after all. To top off controls then, you do also have access to motion controls, if that is more your style. The gameplay is Itself hasn't changed too much from the first and that was never really the problem with the game the core mechanics are here even if they are uninspired and by uninspired I mean it's literally just a direct copy of Mario Kart even things like you know the uh, weapons all of them they, they're kind of like all have a similar feel you get the homing missile uh, the boost as well the cloud overhead it all works so honestly the drift kind of questionable it's a little temperamental but once you get used to it it shouldn't cause you too many issues where the game improves so for sure is its roster and what can be described as then your pit crew. The first game it had a seriously low character count of 12 characters. This one we're getting 30 playable characters including the mighty Ren and Stimpy which is a favourite of mine personally. That is my childhood right there. The eShop, the box, it will advertise 100 characters which is true but just no 70 are not playable. They make up your crew members. This though I gotta say is perhaps the best idea on show here before each race or even like you know cup you choose your racer, you choose your cart, and then you jump into customization. The customization, it takes you through parts of the cart, so think tires, engine, the skin, but then it moves on to your crew. Here, you're gonna choose three characters, each with their own perks. Two are automatic, so think like Grandpa from Rugrats, after every weapon pickup, he gives you a speed boost, but then you get the crew chief. You activate this one by pressing the X button and my favourite here was Lynn. She has a hockey stick and she smacks you up the ass to give you a speed boost when needed. Recharging this crew chief special, simple enough, just drive over slime around the track. This is, as I said, by far the most impressive piece of this new entry because it actually leads to something that feels original and it was desperately needed. Not only does it now add, you know, a ton more characters, even if they aren't truly playable, but it brings a tiny bit of strategy to the table that does not hurt the experience at all. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed messing with different combinations of characters here. Just know though as well, a decent chunk of the roster is locked away at the beginning and you'll need to beat cups and challenges to access them. With that, in fact, let's talk modes. So gameplay modes and we get the traditional cup experiences. So race across seven different cups, each comprised of four tracks. Free race then, so you choose a racer and track and you get to it. Challenges, so think objectives alongside a race. So let's say you need to pull off seven stunt jumps and win. Time trial and then arena. Arena is a battle mode, either free for all or you have to keep hold of a golden spatula. This has two arenas to play on, but it gets boring quickly and I doubt many will come back for it. Finally, for modes then we get local split screen multiplayer that accommodates up to four players and then online where you can play with friends or use matchmaking. You can do a cup in this mode or single race, but just as a warning, it's been like kind of quiet online and I've had quite a wait time to get into a few of the races I did try. These game modes, they all take place over the games included 28 tracks. The tracks, they range in quality, but for the most part, they are okay. They provide a decent level of, you know, variety and there's a few secrets and shortcuts along the way. All right, so now, performance the first game was let's face it pretty awful it targeted 30 fps but largely it failed miserably there sitting somewhere around and often below the 20 frames per second mark this is better it's targeting 60 fps keyword there though targeting every single race you take on you will have slowdown and the funny thing is it's nearly always caused by the slime firing onto the track or what's supposed to be like an exciting moment so i think like a big ass jump the level of slowdown you get of course is like dependent on the track some do better than others no doubt based on how populated it all is didn't think the performance was awful but it's never a good feeling having a racer suffer from slowdown and they really need to work on locking it out because when it stutters it really stutters 
does, that is never a good thing as you're about to, you know, take that next corner or, you know, fire out that next attack. The frame rate, I will say from what I can tell, does seem to fare better handheld. So if that is your playstyle of choice, you'll actually probably walk away with a better experience here. Overall, look, it's for sure an improvement over the first entry. I like the extended roster and the pit crew is actually very cool. It's like, I love the like strategy element of it all. Again, though, like the first game performance is letting it down. The frame rate drops just impact the enjoyment. And I was actually sitting there asking myself, why would I play this game in particular over, you know, Mario Kart, Crash or Team Sonic? And I honestly couldn't think of a reason. You're probably saying, but the roster, that's why our, you know, our childhood. And I wish I could agree, but let's talk about that more in like graphics and audio. So graphically, it's again a step up from the original. The game still doesn't look great, honestly, but it for sure comes with a whole new like sharpness to the image that the original was lacking. While I don't recognize all the characters, honestly, the ones I do recognize for the most part, you know, the ones I grew up on, they look relatively decent, even if I'm not sure about the way they've kind of designed Ren and Stimpy. It doesn't quite capture what I expected in 3D. I just wish overall they all had a bit more detail. They still feel very lifeless and the animation is so limited here, meaning I can like visually see the character, but they don't act like I would expect them to, which is a big part of a character's personality. The tracks then each clearly they pull from the shows. So they for sure went all out at least on the fan service front. Complaints, honestly, I think it is serviceable. They've improved across the board. The tracks are more varied for the most part and the graphical style, it's colorful and cartoony as you would expect. It's just, if anything, kind of missing the soul, I guess. And that's, that's the bit I was really hoping to see this time around. Audio then on one constant complaint with the last entry, where is the voice acting? And yeah, let's ask that question again this year. No voice acting, it's just insane. I, I can YouTube all of these characters and find millions of video clips and episodes. So why not just pull some snippets from the show directly? I'm not expecting, you know, completely new audio. This all builds into the characters, just not capturing the magic. And for me, that is a big deal. I'd love to see Ren and Stimpy, the turtles, the Rugrats, all kind of slinging put downs at each other or celebrating their victories. Instead, they race in silence. Then the music, it's okay, poppy and happy, and that's really all you can expect. Overall though, look, audio is the big miss. The addition of voice acting could have gone a long way to bring in these characters to life. I honestly like believe that voice acting is more important than any animation they could add. All right, so the final verdict, last year's entry was a miss, let's face it, and credit where credit is due. What we get here is for sure an improvement. Tracks better, a ton more characters, the implementation of crews, which just adds strategy, more features generally, which drives more replayability, and the graphics smoother, as well as then, of course, the addition of online play. Sadly, though, this is all let down in two major areas. The frame rate, yes, they bumped it to 60. Yes, it runs better, but the slowdown is real and frequent. I'd even go as far as saying maybe they should have just, you know, targeted a locked 30 here instead because every time that slowdown kicks in it's painful and for me you just can't afford slowdown like this in a kart racer it's all built around precision now young kids they probably won't care I'll, I'll give you that much but I'm reviewing this as the guy who grew up like watching many of these characters in the 90s and that's where they miss the most I see Nickelodeon in the name but outside of the slime I just don't feel it in the game they are just empty shells of the characters with zero fight acting and personality and that is a waste when the license is so good. Today I'm giving Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 a below average 4 out of 10. Thanks for watching today. Will you be adding this one to your collection? Can you handle frame rate issues in a racer or is that just too much for you to, you know, deal with? The nicest thing I can say about the game today is some of the new systems are really impressive, really enjoyed them, but more than anything, I can at least say it's better than last year's entry. The big problem though, just like last year, a lot of missed potential. So look, as always then, a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. Truly is appreciated, helps more than you know. So thank you all so much. If you want to check that out for yourself, it is linked in the video description down below. Then like hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.